Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Generation Millennium. Jeff Romanis here. And Pokemon Home has finally been updated with a few complications. I mean, they're not the worst complications in the world, but let's start with the positives. So, first off, here's a shiny wheezing I caught. Or rather, it was a coughing I caught. And as you can see here, this is met. I uh, should say met an East Lake Axwell. I got this from as a coughing, shiny coughing from a Max Ray battle. But then you're thinking like, wait a minute. But this is that Kanto form, is it? How in the world did you get the Kanto that like the coughing to evolve into Kanto Weezing in Sword and Shield because it always evolves into Gala form? Well that's where the Pokemon Home update comes in. You can do things like this now. You can transfer this the coughing over to Pokemon Brilliant Diamond or Shiny Pearl, evolve it over there, it'll evolve into the Kanto over Great, because as of right now, the Galarian variant is not programmed into that game. Not to mention since it's still it's the same situation from like Generation Seven with the Ultra Wormholes. Like if you took like a Pikachu and use a Thunderstone and a Lola evolve into a Lola and Raichu, but then if you went to an Ultra Wormhole and Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, since you're technically no longer in a Lola, you're gonna use your Thunderstone over there, and then Pikachu evolve into Kanto Raichu. It's the same situation here, but in this case, you have to go, go through the more hoops. In this case, you have to transfer the Shiny Coughing from Sword and Shield through Pokemon Home into Brilliant Diamond Shiny Pearl, but then you can evolve it there into the Kanto Weezing, hence what I have here. But also, you can also transfer other Pokemon, like say this Scaruppy I have here. This one is actually from Brilliant Diamond Shiny Pearl, which is a bit odd. Like in the summary page here, like that thing next to the shiny mark, that little, like, uh, I don't even know what that symbol is supposed to be, but essentially that's the mark for the Generation 8 Pokemon. The BDSP mark is different, but you know this is from BDSP because it says it's caught from a faraway place. I guess they don't. I'm, I'm a bit odd they don't actually show like Sinnoh on this page, but then if you were to go into Pokemon Home, I'm pretty sure it would tell you it's from the Sinnoh region. But while we're on that topic, wait, I already had prepared. Let's actually hop out of Sword and Shield and into uh, Brilliant Diamond as soon as I find it. Ah, here it is. It's been a while since I actually opened up this save file because, because apparently it's way over there. Oop, thanks. They can that. That's my, <laughs> my lunch alarm. It's about that time for me already. That's kind of crazy. I didn't realize time was passing by that quickly. Give me, give me here a second, guys. I wish I could cut this out, but unfortunately, I can't cut the footage because I don't have access to that kind of uh, editing software at the moment. Yeah, I probably should have done prepared this ahead of time before I started recording. I apologize. But I'm actually looking for the Kanto Weezing. And the scruffy that I just showed off. Oh wait, there they are. All right, here's the summary page. This is the same Kanto Weezing you saw from Sword and Shield. And this it's shiny scruffy. And in the summary page here on the, I think you should be able to see like a little mark there. It's like a little, uh, kind of looks like a triangle of sorts, uh, or kind of also looks like an A, but essentially that's the symbol for BDSP, and next to that should be the shiny mark indicator. And then you can see the summary page here, it says this one was cost should be in the, like the Grand Underground. Think back to Weezing. Let's see, it's straight all the way across time and space. Okay, yeah. And also keep in mind that when you, whenever you transfer Pokemon through Sword and Shield or BDSP, 
like the move sets will change depending on what moves Pokemon know. Like previously in Sword and Shield, this this Weezing had uh, Sludge Bomb, Side Beam, uh, Pain Split, and Stockpile, which those three moves are actually Ig moves. But then when you transfer it over to BDSP, it looks like it kept Sludge Bomb, but all the other moves got re replaced by pretty useless stuff. Actually, did, 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 did the ability change? Oh no, so I was just like a guess. Okay, so that's good. The ability still stayed the same, but you can still see the stuff going, going on here. But also keep in mind that for while well, you can still clone Pokemon if you have access to a missing no egg or what's that, be careful when you're transferring over to BSP because BDSP keeps track of cloning, so only make sure you have like one copy of each Pokemon or clone. And if you do clone, make, make sure that they have like different like uh, natures or whatnot because Ilka and BDSP are really tight on that. And as a warning, if you transfer Pokemon from BDSP into home, if you did any cloning prior to all the um, fixes and whatnot, like if you were, um, well, essentially just cloning like the earlier versions of the game, like 1.1.2 or whatever it was called, 1.2. During those time periods where you can like use the menu glitches to do cloning and whatnot. If you still have those Pokemon in your boxes, you can you still use them in game, but you cannot trade them online and you can also not, not transfer them into your home account. Like I actually looked into my tra transferring some Pokemon, like I want to transfer over like the entire Sinnoh decks into other save files so I can help complete the Sinnoh decks faster so I don't have to re continue to catch everything and then I can just get the national decks faster on those particular save files. I've noticed that some Pokemon like say, I think my Infernape and Miss Magus on this particular save file where I guess I cloned him at some point, so I can't not transfer them over or... So they, they just can't be transferred over. Also, apparently some people, as odd as it may sound, have been having um, some like issues getting actually into Pokemon Home. Like there's like some error code. This does involve having Pokemon Pokemon Home that have like altered data. Like if you have like a Minior from Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, or there's other Pokemon that are like hacks that you're not supposed to have, or you probably did have, then unfortunately, then your game has been kind of like locked out from home for the time being until Ilka can fix Pokemon Home completely. So that's a bit unfortunate. Like I think it's called like error code 1000 something or whatever. It's <laughs> but anyway, just quite a bit of a mess going on. It's just hard to. Oop, actually, I actually wanted to put one. I actually wanted to actually put home now to showcase what's going on. And also in Pokemon Home, I think I believe they also have the in-game Pokedexes now available for all games. So like, keep in mind that we now have officially like a bunch of Pokemon games now available here on Nintendo Switch. There's Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go Eevee. We have Pokemon Sword, Pokemon Shield, Pokemon Brilliant Diamond, Pokemon Shiny Pearl, and now Legends Arceus. That's a total of like four different games. That you don't have access to on Nintendo Switch, you can now transfer Pokemon all over the place into Pokemon Home. And don't forget, Pokemon Go can also transfer Pokemon into Pokemon Home as well, so that's technically five areas you can transfer from. Just remember that Let's Go and Go are one way trips. Like, if you think take Pokemon out of Let's Go and bring them to Home and to bring, bring them to the other game, they can no longer never go back into Let's Go because of the differences in how things are calculated. And also, as much as disappointing as it is, like the national decks is still locked because while well, home may be updated, the other Pokemon games have not if they were to include other Pokemon from other Pokemon games. Or just the national decks entirely, the, the other Pokemon games like Sword and Shield, BDSP, Legends Arcus, they, they would all have to receive major updates to incorporate the full national decks, which I do not think they are properly prepared for just yet. So at this point in time, you can only transfer Pokemon that exist in between each game's respective Pokedexes. Although I'm not sure how regional variants work. I don't think they, they will work though. Like if you try to take Galarian Weezing, even though technically he's still a Weezing, I don't think he can go into BDSP. I haven't tried it. Although I essentially just open this up so I, I can just like kind of look around a bit. But then there's Pokemon Sword, I think. Wait, am I in the wrong place? I think so. 
Yeah, here we go. So the Volume 4 logo. Wait, oh, no, that's the Beat Brilliant Diamond logo, so you have that there. Here's the Volume Sword. Shield, and... Let's go. So I have all these different save files on this particular profile. I should have another Let's Go save file, but I transferred it to another one of my support switches, so that's why it's not here right now. And I haven't started Legend Arcus save file on this profile, but if you would have all the games here on this... Oh yeah, also I need to start, I haven't started a Shiny Pearl save file here, so if you had to take all those games into consideration, then you can technically move Pokemon into home from seven different games on the Switch. That's pretty insane. Like seven games. I mean, at the moment for Switch, that's pretty insane. And when Scarlet and Violet come out, that number's going to go up to nine. Because I'm pretty sure that's going to be on Switch. I don't, because I don't think I've heard anything about a new announcement for a console, so. <laughs> and then when you look at it compared to like Nintendo 3DS, let's see, we got X and Y. So that's four. Then this is the Lola games. Currently, that's eight games. So on the Nintendo 3DS, that's eight games there for Generation 6 and 7. Although if you include all the other games from Nintendo DS, then that number skyrockets, but just 3 is itself. And uh, I guess I can just open up this. And I also noticed that the loading times seem to be very... I want to say strict, but they're also like quite a bit high. So this is like the Sino Dex I was just talking about that I transferred over. Also, be aware, if you actually had any illegal mons and you transferred them into home, they would turn into bad eggs and then you can essentially just not use them. So make sure you just avoid having any illegal Pokemon. Like it has like a .com in his name or it says like Machamp or Pokemon Labs or anything along those lines. If you get those, just just release them ASAP. Like from my understanding, they, they cannot be used, like traded or battled with online. And if you do try to battle them online, your game receives like a flag or a ping and you might... And again, locked out of your your Nintendo account might be like officially banned. You can no longer go online with that particular account. Or worst case scenario, your entire Nintendo Switch just may end up like not working for some reason. Therefore, your entire Switch becomes like completely useless or just can no longer go online. Nintendo and Game Freak and just all the other companies they really want to cut down the hacking front, and I actually agree to it to a degree. But I mean, it's not completely destroying the online community, but like. It's just like, hack Pokemon is already bad, but cloning, I mean, that one I really, never really understood. I mean, like, you're cloning Pokemon, you're trading them to other people who may not have access to these Pokemon, so, like, you're helping other people, so, that's not the worst thing in the world, but if you're, like, cloning hack Pokemon and training them out, then that's a different story, so. <laughs> it's a give and take situation, like, you can't, you can't please everyone, that's impossible. But I think that's everything I really have to say about Pokemon Home. I listed my the main things you can do with Pokemon Home earlier, like just transferring Pokemon over from one game to another to evolve for regional variants like Queezing. Or another one, like for example, in Sword and Shield, you have a ton of regional variants, like say uh, the Meowth line, the Johto, the, like the Kanto Meowth, Johto Corsola, Hoenn Zigzagoon. You can all catch these in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So you can get them with the proper nature you want over here because if you try to get them with their proper natures in Sword and Shield, they would, and you try to use Everstone, they would, you would probably just get the Galarian variants instead, which you probably don't want because you're hunting the other regional variants. So you can now get those Pokemon with the proper natures that you want in BDSP, and then you can transfer them to home and to Sword and Shield. Then you can start using Everstone that way. That's what I'm planning to do right now because I have some regional variants I'm going after. Breeding from a pseudo breeding and I plan to do that Sword and Shield because it's much faster than doing in BDSP. But also keep in mind if you're transferring some Pokemon like say Gigantamax Pikachu, Gigantamax Eevee, or Gigantamax Meowth, keep in mind that while you can still trade them, transfer them into Sword and Shield into Pokemon Home, they cannot go into either Brilliant Diamond or Shining Pearl or Atlantis Arceus as long as they have the Gigantamax mark on them. So if you want to transfer them over, especially if they're shinies, over into either BDSP or Legends Arceus, make sure that you use the Max Soup in the, in the Master Dojo on the Isle of Armor. You need three Max Mushrooms to, do that, to remove that Gigantamax mark. And yes, I actually found a surprise that some people probably don't know that the Max Soup, it can both grant the Gigantamax mark to a Pokemon that can Gigantamax, like I said Pikachu, Eevee, and Meowth, 
but you can also remove said gigantic max mark. So make sure you do that if you want to transfer those guys over into the, the, the Sinnoh games, pretty much. I keep saying their names, but I guess I'll just call them, refer to them as the Sinnoh games. <laughs> But beyond that, I think that's everything I can think of at the moment that I've heard about for the Pokemon Home update. And frankly, while I'm, I won't be going crazy going back into Brilliant Diamond Shining Pearl as much, I will, however, be using BDSP to get the Pokemon I need into Sword and Shield. Because at the moment, I've been doing Masuda breeding for a lot of regional variants. At the moment, I've gotten... Oh, it's been almost a month since I started Mr. Breeding in order to pass the time while doing Dimex Adventures while streaming on Twitch. But at the moment, let's see, I think the six I got. I got a Galarian Slowpoke, I got a Hapini, uh, Unova in your mask, Porygon, Alolan Sandshrew, and Unova in Stunfisk. Yeah, those are the six. I got all of them shiny and beast balls, bred, Ms. From a pseudo breeding, and if you're wondering how the heck I got a Porygon in the Beast Ball, you can get you can find Porygon in the Dynamax Adventures. So you can catch a Beast Ball there. If it's not shiny, then you can just pseudo breed it. So that's how you do that one. Everything else you can just capture in some way, shape, or form a Beast Ball and then just breed it from there. Although for Alolan, Sand True, like if you didn't have a Beast Ball caught from like the Generation 7 games, you can also use the method. Or passing out Pokeballs, I mentioned that in my Pokemon pod, my breeding podcast on this channel. So make sure you can look it over. That's if you're wondering how to get Pokeballs onto other regional variants or just Pokemon of the same species. At the moment, I'm actually hunting a Lolan Diglett, but once I'm done with that, I'm gonna definitely be going over other regional variants that are, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would like, like a Kanto shiny Meow. So then you can give it Max to get Gigantamax Max Meow because only a the Kanto variant can become its Dynam its Gigantamax form, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people will prefer like that one. I can and yes, I am offering all of these Masuda break Yeah, excuse me. All the eggs I'm a pseudo breeding as giveaways, either on my Discord, links down below if you want to request anything from me. As well uh, on Twitch, which I'm more than happy to help you there. When I'm streaming, I usually stream around 9.30 to 9, excuse me, 9.30 p.m. to midnight, 12 a.m. Eastern, Eastern, Pacific Standard Time, PST. I keep getting pissed myself, I apologize. I don't want to give false information. However, on Fridays and Saturdays, I may stream earlier than that. I may start streaming around 11 a.m. PST to maybe around 3 p.m. PST. So about four hours there on the weekdays. And then on weekday... Is that... I usually stream in the evening though, that's night, that, that, that night time, which may be bad timing for some people, but I try to do both, like Mondays through Thursdays I do the evening time, and then Fridays and Saturdays I do the morning times, just so I can reach out to more people, and as far as I'm aware, I think some people are, are starting to get out of school slash college and whatnot, so summer's coming up, I might get more followers, and I would be more than happy if any of you out there would like, comment, and subscribe, and also pay attention not that, well, not pay attention, but link up to my other social medias, other than just here on YouTube, but also on my Twitch, Patreon, $2 a month there, you can gain access to a special Pokemon Home account, which I do, if you cannot get, like, the, the main purpose for having that Pokemon Home Patreon account is so, if I'm not available to do trading with you in live time because the time is no difference and all that stuff, you can make requests to me, and I will then deposit them into the Pokemon Home account, where you can withdraw them at your leisure. And I also make a note to my Discord that if I do deposit anything to the home account, then it's specifically for that particular person. At the moment, I only have one Patreon who's been a supporter of me. Thank you, Joker, for for being a Patreon for the past five or so months. But if you would like to support me there, on, I would definitely appreciate it. My visual impairment has made finding work difficult, so any, any and all support would be more than welcome. And on Twitch wise, I'm actually getting close to getting affiliated, I'm getting close to 50 followers. But I'm just trying to get my viewer average up. So if you guys could also like follow me on on Twitch, like you don't even have to talk in the chat, but like maybe just keep the tab open, lurking and whatnot, that would also be appreciated. Any any form of support at this point, I would just love. But if you could also just drop by and say hello, that would also be nice. I 
love talking to everyone in chat. It just makes the stream so much more fun and enjoyable, better than me just sitting there, streaming, Dynamax adventuring, and Vasudi breeding simultaneously, but just monologuing when I'm at it. It just gets a bit boring, like I'm doing right now on this video. So please comment, criticize me, roast me, do whatever it takes to... <laughs> I don't know. I don't have... I'm not partnered or anything here on YouTube, so I can't get any kind of revenue, but... Just knowing that I'm getting, I'm supported by all of you guys is more than enough to make me happy at this point in time. So, thank you all for watching to the end if you did. I hope that my information was useful in some way, and I, I guess I'll see you all next time. Take care!